Another good example is when abortion advocates ask us what we believe about the death penalty. We could respond by telling them what our position is, but notice that they are not really asking to know what we think about the death penalty. What they really want to do is to make us look hypocritical. They want to make the point that if you or I support the death penalty, we can be pro-all human life. Of course, the pro-life position is about protecting the rights of all innocent human beings. Pro-lifers, like most Canadians, have different beliefs about protecting the lives of guilty people. That is a different issue. But taking a proactive approach means rather than responding directly to the question, you actually respond to the intents of the question. By doing so, you reveal the problem with the question. For example, when someone asks me about the death penalty, what I would say in return is this. I believe guilty people should be treated differently than innocent people. How about you? Of course, most people acknowledge that we should treat the guilty and innocent differently, otherwise we'd have no jails. I would then simply ask the abortion advocate, if you agree that the guilty should be treated differently than the innocent, then why does my position on the punishment of the guilty have any bearing on my pro-life position, which is about protecting the innocent? Notice that you don't have to give your position on the death penalty to make that point. You can also add that if there is any inconsistent opinion, it's that of being against killing guilty people and in favor of killing innocent people. Yet abortion advocates use these kind of distraction tactics all the time. They ask questions like, have you ever adopted any children? Or have you ever given birth? To make the point that if pro-lifers have had no experience with an unplanned pregnancy, they should have no say in the debate. Worse, they use ad hominem or personal attacks, implying that there is something wrong with pro-lifers' character and therefore our arguments. In an HBO special, 80s comedian Roseanne Barr said, You know who else I can't stand is them people that are anti-abortion. I hate them. They're ugly, old, geeky, hideous men. They just don't want nobody to have an abortion because they want you to keep spitting out kids so they can molest them. If all these arguments are true, and they clearly are not, how does it change the fact about what the are? How does my inability to give birth or my main character change the value of the unborn? It clearly doesn't. And when dialoguing with abortion advocates, pro-lifers need to point this out. Especially since abortion discussions can get heated, it's important to find common ground wherever possible. It doesn't mean we compromise our position, but it does mean we acknowledge that the person we are talking to, for the most part, thinks what they believe is an objective good. Many abortion advocates truly believe that they are fighting for fundamental freedoms that must be protected in order for women to be equal to men. You can let them know that you too believe in fundamental freedoms. In fact, you can tell them that you too are pro-choice. I'm pro-choice when it comes to what career women choose or whether or not they drink. But just as all Canadians are pro-choice on some things, Canadians, including abortion advocates, are also anti-choice when it comes to other things. That's why women can't legally choose to drink and then drive, or do certain drugs. Women can't even choose to have sex with whoever they want. A few years ago, a Canadian woman was convicted of assault after having sex with her husband because she failed to inform him that she had the HIV virus. As well, when abortion advocate Judith Timpson was asked if Canadians should have a choice to use their tax money to pay for abortions overseas, she said no. Why? Because according to her, women's lives were in danger. In other words, she's anti-choice about what Canadians can do because other lives are in danger. But hasn't that been the pro-life position all along? In other words, if an unborn child's life is in danger, doesn't that mean we should be anti-choice in killing her? Notice throughout these examples, I kept focus on the main issue of the abortion debate. What is the unborn? Abortion advocates will do everything to distract you from that question because they really don't have an honest answer to it. Now, there will always be people like Joyce Arthur who insist the abortion debate is over. Well, we have to keep insisting that the abortion debate is over. Perhaps it's because the abortion debate is not over. And if pro-lifers effectively dialogue about abortion with their family, with their friends, and their colleagues, in fact, then the debate is only just beginning.